Good afternoon. I hope you had a great lunch. Did you notice it was a zero-waste lunch? Yeah, well, I'm actually very proud that the Wisher Fest decided to go zero-waste. It's a great satisfaction. So I'm going to talk about zero-waste and how collaborative dynamics can help achieve success. But first, before talking about zero-waste, I want to talk a little bit about waste. Because when you think of waste as a problem, you may have some pictures in your head, like this one, for example. I think many of you have heard about the continent of plastic, which actually is more like a soup of plastic. And I think everyone will agree that this is unacceptable, as well as this or this. And many people think that it's a question of discipline, organization, sometimes industrialization, or sometimes corruption. And actually, uh, I hear a lot of local politicians tell me uh, that luckily, here in France, we are not in Naples. We don't have these kind of problems. But if the waste problem was only a problem like you see in the, like you have seen in the previous pictures, well, the problem would be solved pretty easily, um, like in this picture. But what happens next? I mean, after the, after the track, what happens uh, once our trash has disappeared from our view? Well, this is where it goes most of the time. And I'm not sure this is more acceptable than the previous images. This is where um, our garbage bins end up, landfills. 30% of uh, European municipal waste is still sent to landfills with all the environmental problems that it, that it has. And when it's not sent to landfills, it sometimes goes to incinerators especially in France, in Denmark, in Sweden. And this is very uh, impressive, actually. Uh, if you have ever visited an incineration plant, uh, like, this is huge. You could put a, a car in this thing up there. Um, and this is very striking. Like, when you visit an incinerator, you will stand speechless, like, because it really shows what our throw away society is. And actually, we don't get rid of the problem with incineration, because when you burn a ton of waste, you get 25 to 50 kilograms of toxic residues that you need to handle separately uh, with a lot of care, because it's really uh, polluting. And that's not the only thing you get. You get also three kilograms of clinker, uh, 300, sorry, kilograms of clinker. So that means your problem, your waste problem, has not disappeared with burning. So we definitely have a waste problem here, and we also have a resources problem, which is kind of logical, actually, because what is waste if not resources wasted? And we have a resources crisis. For example, you may have heard about the Global Earth Overshoot Day, it's the date of the year when we have exhausted the, the nature's budget for the year. Uh, well, last year it was August 13th, and each year it comes earlier. There is another connection, which is maybe less intuitive, but I, I would like to mention it because it is very important. And actually we have a, a, a French author, Philippe Biwix, who wrote a, boot, a book about this. It's the link between the resources crisis and the, way, uh, and the climate crisis. And I will try to explain it shortly. Um, so I mentioned we have less resources available, especially metal in this case. That means that we need more energy to extract these resources because they are less accessible. And at the same time, we, have, we, we need more energy. Uh, and to uh, access this energy, we will need more resources because it is as well less accessible, so you need more infra infrastructure to get it, more metal, for example. And so you need um, more resources. So, so you, see the, you see the problem. 
you need more resources, then you need more energy, but you need more energy, then you need more resources. So what can zero waste do to answer this multiple crisis? Well, I will first explain what zero waste is, and then we'll see the results uh, that it can have. It's pretty simple. I think you may know about the four R's, redesign or rethink, reduce, reuse, recycle. And we can sum summarize it with this sentence. If we cannot reuse, compost or recycle a product, then we, we should not be making it uh, in the first place. Let's explain a little bit in details with some examples. Uh, rethink, for example, is to redesign products so, so that they are built to last. Uh, and for example, modular products are more easily repairable, like the Fairphone, for example. Um, anyone can repair a Fairphone. It's pretty sim simple. Any user can repair its own phone. Reducing waste has a lot to do with um, less packaging, uh, basically. Um, and for example, farmers market or bulk food uh, shops can help a lot in, in this uh, goal. Reducing waste uh, also uh, comes with uh, reusing more products, more uh, items. And for example, the glass bottle, before it's recycled, should be reused many, many, many times. Uh, and you can uh, reinvent deposit systems so that we can reuse packaging. And then, at last, uh, comes recycling. But really, it should come after reduction, because recycling in itself consumes uh, a lot of resources. And the best recycling you can do is composting. It's recycling the organic waste. And this can be done even in urban areas, as you will see in the, in the next examples. So basically, this is zero waste. It's pretty simple. It's nothing new, actually. And the good news is that it's already happening, and it's already having some great results in many cities uh, around Europe, such as in Treviso, in Italy, where they have uh, achieved uh, this uh, figure, like 53 kilograms per habitant, waste per habitant per year. Um, this may sound uh, a lot, but uh, it's actually like 10 times less than uh, the average, which is pretty good. And they are aiming at 10 kilograms per uh, year per person. So it's not zero, but we're getting close to it. Another example in Italy is Capanori. It's a middle-sized city, and they have adopted uh, the zero strategy uh, 10 years ago, but within five years, they achieved uh, great results, cutting by more than half the waste production. Another example I would like to mention is a very small city compared to the others uh, in the Basque country, which is called Ernani. And I like this example because it shows that you can achieve a revolution uh, very quickly. Uh, within two years, they actually reversed their statistics. They were sending 70% of their waste to landfills, and now they are recycling 70% of their waste. And last but not least, San Francisco, you may have heard of the zero waste strategy of San Francisco, which has enabled them to achieve 80% uh, uh, recycling uh, in the city. Uh, when I talk about recycling, 80% recycling, it's either recycling or composting. What is interesting in these several examples is the role that have played cooperative or collaborative dynamics and principles. Let me take the San Francisco examples to begin with. San Francisco um, actually is interesting in the perspective, in the historical perspective, because it all started with a waste pickers group, like more than a hundred years ago. And this waste pickers group uh, evolved into an employee-owned company that still exists today. And its name is Recology, and they are 
designing and operating the zero waste strategy in San Francisco for for the since the beginning actually, and it's really important that it's it is a co-op because in this way the 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 employees are very much involved into the success of the company, of course, but into the success of the zero waste strategy in itself, and I think that's really one reason why they were so successful. They have been so successful um, up to now. And also, another thing that is interesting in the zero waste uh, strategy of San Francisco is that it's a monopoly. Recology has a monopoly on waste management in the city, but it's a monopoly that is controlled by citizens. Like citizens, they can decide to uh, have a, a, a vote about the, zero, uh, about the waste management uh, strategy, the waste management choices. And actually, the last time it happened was in 2012. The citizens have uh, had to vote for or against uh, the recology uh, contract, and they decided to keep recology and to keep the zero waste strategy. I would like to talk about another example the, we, we are going to come back to Europe, uh, which is Capanori. So this city, which is located in Tuscany, in Italy, uh, has achieved great results, as, um, as I mentioned earlier. And this was thanks to the participation of everyone, families, shops, enterprises, uh, citizens, and leaders, such as Rosanna Accolini that you can see in the picture, he was a school teacher. Uh, he became aware that uh, incineration was having health impacts and he wanted to avoid that. And he took the lead. He first he fought against the incinerators and right after he proposed a zero waste strategy and he led the zero waste strategy for many years. And now he's back to his teaching again. And yeah, it was thanks to his leadership, uh, citizen leadership, that I think that the city achieved uh, these results. Also, the citizens, they all got involved. For example, they volunteered to, to do some door-to-door -door, um, work, raising awareness among the, the other inhabitants and explaining them about how to sort the different kind of ways, etc. And this also was a key factor in the success. Last, I would like to do a very shortly, a comparison between transition towns and zero waste cities. Because they have many common points, and many, these common points are, I think, the key factors of success. The first one is inclusion. As I mentioned, you need everyone on board. The second one is a positive appeal. You need to um, make it attractive, make it desir desirable. And last, you need an action plan, because Action is what motivates people. So if you want them to get involved and get involved in the long term, you should not spend too much time thinking about a strategy and then maybe after a few months or a few years, you will come to the action plan. No, you need to act first. So if you want to know more about zero waste, we are organizing our own festival, which will happen here same place in uh, six weeks. So please join us. And if you have any questions, I'll be uh, happy to answer them later today. Thank you.